Andre Holland, for your role as Dr. Algernon Edwards on Cinemax's The Nick, you were nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the Satellite Awards and also shared in the award for Best Cast. So did you attend the ceremony and did you get a trophy? Uh, I unfortunately did not get to attend the Satellite Awards as I was had a previous uh, engagement. We were filming actually the uh, second season, so I didn't get to go. Um, but I was very flattered uh, by the nomination and, and really wish I could have been there. Um, we did get a little sort of certificate in the mail, which I'm having framed, and uh, picked out a good spot on my wall for it, though, so. So at the Emmys, if you're nominated, you'll have to submit an episode that you feel represents your best performance from the first season. Do you have a particular episode in mind uh, that you would submit to the Emmys if you're nominated? That would be, uh, that would be tough. I mean, um, my favorite episodes are episode two, episode three, and probably Probably episode six. Um, I probably would go with six because that's the one where uh, Clive Owen's character and, and Algernon finally come to head, come to a head. Uh, he discovers the sub basement that I've been working out of, and then we have this big scene where we um, basically air out all the things that we've been wanting to say, and then end up in a in a much better place. You know, we sort of find the common ground, and that was that scene for me was was probably the most fun to do. Um, but at the same it would be tough because in the earlier episodes in two and three are the ones where you get to see Algernon um, in the in the rooming house that he lives in where he's really trying to figure out how to interact with black people and having a difficult time fitting in at home and also having a difficult time fitting in at work. And so you get to see that sort of um, double consciousness at, at play, which I think is a really interesting aspect. So one of those three will be, will be uh, the one I would submit. Honestly, I'm surprised you know the episode so well because uh, I understand that The Nick and Game of Thrones are pretty much the only two shows that shoot the entire season at once. Like, how does that even work? You get all the scripts at once before you start shooting? Yeah, we got them all up front. There were 10 episodes and um, it's, a, it's a bit daunting because, you know, there's a lot of material and um, it's tough. But what I did and what I think some other actors on the show did is we created, I created like this big um, board basically and I put each and every scene that I'm in in order, so episode one, all of episode one scenes and two and three, so that you know on any given day, if we decided that we were going to do work in episode seven, for example, I could look and see exactly what's happened before and what's about to happen right after. So that really helped me um, keep it straight. But it also <laughs> coincidentally made me very, very, very familiar with what happens in each and every episode. So I know what you mean. Like I, you know, it probably is a bit <laughs> a bit weird for me to be able to say episode two was this and three was that, but after staring at that board for so long, I kind of know, you know, exactly what happens all the way through. Okay, so Steven Soderbergh, your director, he loves long takes. Does this impact your performance at all, or is it just different in the editing room? Well, I think that um, one thing about Steven is that he, he, he knows what he wants. Um, and he has a wonderful way of not making things any more complicated than they have to be. So what that translates to for the actor is that it means you have to come prepared. You know, hundred percent prepared because sometimes you may only do one or two takes of a, of a of a scene, or as you say, he may combine two or three scenes together to make it one long, one long shot, one long take. Um, so the way it's impacted me is it has definitely raised my game, my level uh, of preparation, um, and and also my quality of listening, if that makes any sense. As, as an actor, that's one of the things. You're, first things you're taught is. It's listening. I mean, that's most. That's ninety percent of, of the work. And when you're in a situation where the train is moving really fast, and you know, you don't always know quite what he's thinking or what he's looking for, listening becomes essential. And so, I think that you know, out of this experience, I've become better at preparing, and I've definitely become a better listener. Not just to the words, but a listener to like what the situation is. You know. Um, and then, lastly, I would say that I, I think that he's. He's taught me how to sort of, um, he, he, he has this wonderful way of like weaning, weaning actors off of approval. Um, and by that, I mean, he, he doesn't give you, he doesn't often give you like pass on the back, like, oh, you know, good job, man, well done. It's, you know, if he's, if he's happy, he just doesn't say anything, you know, and for, <laughs> right? and for some actors that could kind of like drive you crazy because you, you know, you could have just poured your heart out and you don't get any feedback. And it's like, well, I hope I didn't screw that up. But what it does, which I think is brilliant, is that it teaches you to, to make your own choices and then also to like to know for yourself whether or not you did what you set out to do. Um, so I'm really I'm really happy that I get to take that from you know with me from this experience. 
Okay, so the Nick, it airs on Cinemax, but a lot of it is managed through HBO. Does it make any difference to you uh, from an acting standpoint, and does it differ from your past experiences on NBC shows? HBO is, to me, is a company I've always wanted to work for. And what I found is that it, it does feel different because it feels a bit more uh, like a boutique company than when I did the shows for NBC. Um, now, that may or may not be true when you look at the numbers, but what it, it really feels like a family. Uh, like the other night I went to, went to HBO to the offices and did a talk for a couple of um, diversity groups that they have within the company, the HBO Time Warner Company. And we, we just sat and talked and had a really nice chat about the Nick and about um, the company and about diversity and what you what I felt was that it really is like it seems to be a real tight-knit group a real family um, And there are people you know several people said you know when people come to work for this company They don't they tend not to leave they tend to be here for years and years and you feel that you know um, so it, it kind of just adds an air of like relaxation and and comfort knowing that you're working with really experienced people who are, you know, are the best in the business and that definitely makes doing my job a lot easier uh, so your character Algernon, he gets in many fights over the season. I think what's surprising is half the time he's actually the one who picks them. I mean, even the last time we see you, you're lying on the ground after being beaten to a pulp. So what do you think is driving him in these scenes? That's a really good question. Um, I, I think that uh, you know one of my one of my favorite writers is James Baldwin, and he has a quote that says. To be a Negro in this country and to be relatively conscious is to be in a rage most of the time. And that quote really speaks to me because I think that's what Algernon is experiencing. He's a, he's a, you know, a man who's worked his butt off and he's done everything the right way. He's, you know, as far as we know, he's always treated people right. He's been the top of his class. He's hugely successful. And yet he finds himself on this island where he doesn't, he doesn't fit in with the black community. He doesn't fit in at work, you know, he, he literally has no one on his side, basically, let me say his parents, but he has no one, no real ally. And I think that I, I understand how that could create a furnace of rage and frustration. And that is just how he expresses it. And I think we see, you know, all over the world right now, you know, how people who don't feel like they're heard or they're seen sometimes turn to physical uh, acting out, right? To express those, to express those pent up feelings. And it's unfortunate that that's how he expresses himself, but it, it makes emotional sense, I think, too. Yeah, I feel like every time I saw you on screen, you were just so angry underneath the surface, <laughs> yeah. like ready to punch somebody, even in the scenes that you weren't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny that you say that, because like, you know, I was at the uh, White House Correspondents' Dinner a couple nights ago. And I don't know if you've seen the, uh, the, the, the speech that Obama gave and you know, the sort of angry, he's like angry um, uh, other self, right? Like, he didn't feel, yeah. He didn't feel yeah. Um, I was watching that and it reminded me of, of, of Algernon, right? Because there, I feel like there is this, this other version of, of a person like that, a person who's like forced into being just like upstanding, uh, do the right thing kind of black man, but who has this other, this other side of him that's unexpressed you know, that he can't quite get out. Uh, so anyway, I just thought it was really interesting that, that you said that and it made me think of, uh, it made me think of that night in, in DC. And, uh, you were just in Selma. Do you have anything else coming up? Uh, I'm gonna do a play uh, this summer at Williamstown Theater Festival. It's a new play by this incredible young writer named Dominique Morris. So I'm gonna do that and then, uh, and then we'll see what happens. Hopefully, uh, hopefully there'll be some fun scripts that'll start rolling in pretty soon and then I'll line something up for the fall and. Um, and, you know, fingers crossed, we'll be back for a third season of The Nick. All right. How about on Selma? Did you uh, attend the Oscars for those ones, or were you busy shooting? Yeah, we were shooting at the time, so I didn't get a chance uh, to go. But, yeah, no, tell me about it, man. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was gutted. I really wanted to go. But I, I did go out for the weekend. Uh, I went out for uh, Friday and Saturday, so I got to go to some of the sort of pre-parties. And, and uh, we had a big dinner for Selma the night before the Oscars, so I got to go to that, but then I had to fly back to Sunday morning in order to get back for work on Monday. So I didn't get to go, but it was it was still a heck of a ride. And I got to go to a bunch of other, a bunch of the other events, you know, all the other award shows that we got nominated for. I attended some of those. So. Okay, well, on behalf of Gold Derby, thanks, Andre, very much for speaking to us, and good luck at the Emmys, and we look forward to seeing you on the second season of The Nick. Thank you so very much, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Have a good day.